When caves and cliffs were split in two, a number of features were further delayed. Archaeology's postponement was the first to be announced, due to it being a completely new system, and requiring more time to iterate on. Later, bundles and goat horns were cut from 1.18, then announced not to be part of the wild update. These are all features that have had mixed reception from the community, but they all have a lot of potential. I've already talked about goat horns in my Caves and Cliffs review, so this one will focus on bundles and archaeology. My name is Cameron, this is Minecraft Ideas Academy, and let's get defending. Before we talk about the bundle, it's important to understand Minecraft's inventory problem. At first, it might seem that the problem is that we don't have enough space, and that the solution is to add more. But there isn't just one inventory problem. At Minecraft Live, game developer Ulrath mentioned several sub-problems, such as switching items between storage and a hotbar, transporting lots of blocks, and carrying many different kinds of items. Shulker boxes help with the second problem. They are essentially a backpack turned into a block. Bundles help with the third problem, one that most players don't consider, how much space is wasted by a non-full stack of items. And they have a simple premise, being able to compress different items into a single inventory slot. They're such an elegant solution. My previous solutions to the inventory problem were not. Before Caves and Cliffs was announced, I brainstormed an item called the Copper Crate. It was originally going to stack similar items together, like stone variants. However, this wasn't very intuitive because it required a lot of groups to be defined somewhat arbitrarily, like a list of wood types or tool types. So I tried a different direction, and had it start off with 9 inventory spaces, with one being removed each time an item different from the first was added. And that way it was kind of like an anti-bundle, best for storing lots of the same item. But if that was the problem I was trying to solve, why didn't I make it simpler and only allow one type of item in it? Because I hadn't broken down the inventory problem into its constituent parts. I didn't know what problem I was trying to solve. And as a result, it never got past the idea phase. That's why I appreciate the bundle so much. It only takes some hands-on experience and a little imagination to utilize its mechanics effectively. When I'm mining, for instance, I can compress my ores into blocks, then bag them all up into one bundle. This results in my inventory taking longer to fill up, which means more time for a mining trip into the new massive caves. However, it is difficult to get hands-on experience with bundles, and that's why people don't realize how useful they are. Rabbit hide is the primary ingredient of its crafting recipe, which is an item that most people won't bother to get for a test world. Rabbits already spawn in a few biomes, don't reliably drop hide, and are hard to kill without using a dandelion to lure it. Of course, bundles are an incentive to interact with rabbits, providing more gameplay, but if a player doesn't see the initial value in bundles, they're less likely to experience that gameplay. Sure, one bundle is usually enough for a test world, and can be reused, but that initial barrier to entry may be too high for the average player to experience it. To lower this barrier, rabbits could have larger hitboxes, like in the combat snapshots. The high drop could be guaranteed. Perhaps rabbits could produce multiple offspring from breeding. These wouldn't take gameplay away from rabbits. In fact, making them less annoying to fight could make their current gameplay more pleasing. Just like how villages were made more common in the village and pillage update, bundles could have initially been easier to obtain, so more people can experiment with them and use them to their fullest potential. But this wasn't the case, so now we have people critiquing bundles without that experience. They claim that a backpack would do a better job at solving the inventory problem. That sometimes, the easiest solution is the best. But this is not one of these times, because as explained before, there isn't just one inventory problem. There's at least three, including hotbar management, maximum capacity, and share variety. This third problem isn't immediately obvious to players, and that's why it needs its own solution. If a bundle had more than one stack, like many have suggested, suddenly it's not the item that declutters your inventory, it's the item that gives you a couple more slots. But if its purpose is simple, it will be much easier for a player to identify when to use one. Then, when players are used to them, the other subproblems will be much easier to address, as they aren't all tangled together, giving the appearance of one big problem. It might even expose new problems for the inventory to solve. Bundles themselves have a lot of room for improvement, however which is likely why they were cut from Caves and Cliffs and the Wild update. One major problem I see is their modes of interaction. Items can't be directly taken out of the bundle, and instead, the last item put in is the first one taken out. Unless you decide to dump the contents on the floor. This makes retrieving items require spare inventory slots, which the bundle was supposed to solve. Thus, it's more useful for storing items that would only be unloaded into chests or other external storage. 
Shulker boxes and ender chests have a similar issue, since they must be placed down to access the inventory. This ties into the first subproblem of inventory management. To solve this problem for the bundle, we'll need to ask a lot of questions. How do we make it intuitive for players? How do we make it work on controller, touch, and keyboard layouts? How do we make retrieving items more convenient with these in mind? And to find the answers, we'll need to delve into the field of user experience, a topic so complex that it is often handled by a separate position from regular developers. If you have seen the comments to my video on the food system, you know how a few simple changes to the hunger bar can evoke entirely different impressions depending on people's psychology. So I'm not going to pretend I have the perfect solution to the bundle's problem. Finding it out takes time, skill, and experience that I just don't have. So let's look at some much simpler problems of the bundle. One is that multiple are hard to tell apart, making them diable should do the trick. Another being their interaction with unstackable items. Since they can only hold a full stack, storing unstackable items inside a bundle gives no advantage. This isn't necessarily a problem with the bundle though, but more a problem with stack sizes in general. So many items are unstackable for seemingly no reason. Music discs, horse armor, enchanted books. Imagine coming across a dungeon chest and just sticking them all in your bundle. That would be possible if they were stackable. And for the stuff that has a reason for not stacking to 64, surely it can be balanced in another way. Making them hard to store and transport is quite the inconvenient nerf. Of course, some things physically can't stack, like items with different durabilities or enchantments. Perhaps we can make an exception to the full stack rule and allow bundles to carry at least two unstackables. Bundles could also have some extra features to flesh them out. Maybe there could be some way to hide its contents to serve as a surprise gift. Bundles being dispensed could spill the contents instead of themselves, allowing for automation. Droppers would still just drop the bundle though. Bundles could also serve as a building tool, where right clicking it could place a random block from it, allowing for more natural pathways. On the whole, I find it sad that the bundle has been quite controversial. Thankfully, their code is still in 1.18, so I can enable their crafting recipe with a dart pack and use them like before. I hope that if others do the same, they might discover how useful bundles can be. Because the inventory problem can't be solved by merely adding more inventory space, sooner or later, the player has to take an active role in managing their own inventory. Bundles actively encourage players to do that, to quote YouTuber Pixelriffs of Survival Guide fame. The design of bundles appears to have been spearheaded by Ulraf, so its postponement past 1.19 is a real shame, especially since other features he worked on, namely goat horns and archaeology, were also postponed. Archaeology was probably the most unexpected thing to be announced at Minecraft Live 2020, and it also appeared to have the most lukewarm response. Many thought it felt underdeveloped, out of place, and somewhat gimmicky. But the content shown was only one small part of a greater system, which has the potential to significantly impact gameplay. Bear in mind that the following information is likely very outdated, nothing mentioned is confirmed to be coming. This is all the information that I was able to dig up from developer quotes and livestreams. To recap Minecraft Live, buried archaeological digs can be found all over the world, and possibly other dimensions. And the dirt and gravel in them can be brushed to reveal artifacts such as ceramic shards and emerald blocks. Diamond blocks were a placeholder, albeit quite a misleading one. Unless you stop brushing the moment the artifact is fully uncovered, it will break. The brushing is merely an animation, it can't be used to create dirt or gravel slabs. Ceramic shards serve as a vehicle for storytelling, and can contain images of things like vindicators, skeletons, trees, dragons, alex, and cows. These shards can be put onto a clay pot in any order, and when finished, the player can bake them by placing fire below them. An important note is that archaeology isn't intended to be solely an educational feature, nor is it supposed to be an important part of progression. It seeks to add gameplay to the existing archaeological content in Minecraft, like desert pyramids or abandoned mineshafts. And, much like the bundle, it fills in a hole that most players didn't even realize was there. Most if not all loot is hidden in chests, and clearing out a structure is as simple as raiding those chests. There's not much diversity, except for bastion remnants where opening a chest will anger nearby piglins. Currently, structures are seen as a means to an end, useless beyond the resources they provide. Archaeology could change that. While still simple, the act of brushing away rubble is a more immersive activity. There's also more potential for variation. Gameplay developer King B Dogs mentioned brushes that work at different speeds. Imagine you're exploring the deep dark and you find some rubble. Do you use the fast brush and risk breaking the artifact? Or do you use the slow brush and risk the warden catching you? Or say you're in a dungeon with a zombie spawner buried under some gravel. Do you use a shovel to dig to and disable the spawner as quickly as possible? Or do you take the time to uncover the artifacts first? These decisions make your reward feel more earned than if you had simply taken it out of a chest. Loot in general is currently in an awkward position. 
Most items found are obtainable elsewhere, making them either obsolete or overpowered. King B-Dogs has said that the team is more interested in adding new items, or maybe even new mobs, to dig sites than existing ones, which already makes archaeology feel more appealing, but a revamp of existing loot is also warranted, as the balance of the game has changed through the ages without the loot being updated to reflect this change. For example, a player will likely come across crops in a village before finding seeds in a dungeon, which used to be the only place to find them. Not long after Minecraft Live 2020, Ulrath hosted a livestream with four other content creators, Ethos Lab, Echo Soldier, Cub Fan, and Azumavoid. Each guest was tasked with creating a pitch related to archaeology. Echo Soldier presented an enhancement to fossils, including them being partially exposed and containing notes written by previous archaeologists. Cub Fan built some indigenous inspired ruins, which could contain a Rosetta Stone like translation key, allowing enchanting runes to be deciphered. Ulrath also mentioned he was interested in exploring this. Azumavoid proposed a structure containing hints about redstone, such as an incomplete logic gate or locked repeater. Ethos Lab designed some catacombs with skeleton spawners and a lot of treasure. To be clear, none of these are confirmed to be coming to the game, but they show that archaeology as a concept can go in all manner of interesting directions. We also learned a bit more from Ulrath's comments during the livestream. The brush is not supposed to be a niche tool, other uses are being considered. Additionally, the blocks containing artifacts are not special, so any dirt or gravel can be brushed without needing to contain an artifact. The blocks can also have their own loot tables, meaning that each structure can have different artifacts. Automation will also be possible in some form, so technical players can get some value out of the feature. Regarding pots, Ulraf hinted at special arrangements of shards behaving differently, and you can get the individual shards back by smashing a pot, allowing for reuse. Dig sites may also contain items not normally obtainable in peaceful mode, such as wither roses or blaze powder. Since archaeology is not part of progression, some of the loot could be novelty items. My friend Big Nuance MC had some ideas for mini totems with effects like removing or adding potion particles, showing the enchantment glint on a player, obfuscating a name, exaggerating player animations, or attracting weather. One of archaeology's biggest appeals is the opportunity for quasi-lore, hints that inspire the player to tell their own story. We have these already, but they're not often specific to individual worlds. This is a big deal because it helps create a personal connection between a player and their world, and also encourages the continuation of these stories via building. It's also nice to have a feature that prompts the player to slow down. That's a recurring theme in the new content. Copper tarnishing takes hours, Deep Slate can't be instamined, and the Warden won't hear sneaking players. This all reminds the player that they are just one small part of the world, not everything is useful or optimised, because the player does not exist to be served, but to be entertained. I hope we get some more information about archaeology soon, there's been so little that piecing this video together felt like archaeology in of itself. If people are more informed about it, then more people will see the possibilities and be more excited for the feature. Whenever Ulraf talks about archaeology, his passion for the subject shines through, it makes me all the more hyped for it. Both bundles and archaeology have more than meets the eye. Bundles are a great idea, but their inaccessibility results in players not acknowledging that. They also need to be easier to use and work with more items, in order to reach their full potential. Archaeology could revolutionise gameplay and structures, and Minecraft quasi lore, but we simply don't know enough about its mechanics to understand exactly how. These features don't deserve to gather dust, they need more iteration and presentation, so they can be appreciated for the gems they are. So, what do you think of these features given this information? Feel free to comment below. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, or become a YouTube member like Yal, Elithris, and Levantino have. I have a podcast with Moying developer Moch coming up, and we're going to talk about Minecraft structures and level design, so subscribe and hit the bell if you want to catch that. If you want to look more into this video subject, I recommend Blockixel Artistry's idea video about archaeology, and Pixelrist's video about bundles. Thanks for watching, and see you then!